Hey, my name is Fred Koch, director of Tudor Bump Institute. Today in my continued series of articles on uh, body parts, we're going to talk about calf training. Calf training is probably one of the most controversial body parts you can talk about. The book I'm going to be using for calf training is Muscles Testing and Function by Kendall and Cundall, one of the oldest physical therapy books you can get. We'll look in the book to see where the muscles are attached. Then we'll talk about how we're going to work them and little concepts around what is missed in when we're talking about calf or better said than calf is lower leg training. Because we also have to consider What we're also going to talk about today is the tibius anterior, which is the front part of the leg muscle. You know, we talk a lot about calf training, but we never talk about the opposite side of the leg. We talk about biceps and triceps, but again, we never talk about the opposite side of the leg. And also, when we consider the opposite side of the leg, which is called the tibius anterior, we have to think of when this muscle is out of balance, how much does it keep the calf from actually growing? So these are some of the things we're going to talk about today, and I'll be right back. We've heard a million times that there's two, two main muscles <clears throat> In the lower leg. The gastrocnemius goes from above the knee to a tendon below the knee on the ankle and both of the calf muscles flex the ankle. The reason that we have the gastrocnemius on the top is because we want this muscle to work when the leg is straight. Now we're going to have to keep this in mind when we begin to train. The leg has to be straight for this muscle to flex the calf properly. The other calf muscle, which again we've heard of a million times, is the solus. It's attached on the bone below the knee and to the foot bone that flexes the ankle. This muscle works when your knee is bent. So when you bend your knee, you have one muscle working, which is the solus, but it slackens the gastrocnemius on the top, so that's why the body makes these two muscles different. But since we use the solus muscle so much, it becomes the dominant muscle. And this will become clearer as we go along. It's also made of a different muscle fiber. It's made of slow twitch fiber, which recovers faster and is used more. It's almost like the same as our forearms. Because we use our hands so much, the forearm muscles are made of slow twitch fiber. So we always talk about these two muscles. <clears throat> what we never talk about is on the other side of the leg, which is the anterior tibia, which is attached again below the knee and flexes the foot in the opposite direction, so it pulls the foot back. But more than just pulling the foot back, it balances out the front and the back. We would never do biceps without triceps. We would never do chest without back. But we always do calves and never the muscle on the front that brings the foot back, which is called the anterior tibia. And once we get into this article and once we get into these videos more, you'll see how important this muscle becomes in the growth and the development of the lower leg muscles, the entire lower leg muscles.